What's up, everybody? This is Whiskey in the Six. I'm Rob. Just going to make sure that I mute the video if it pops up over here. It doesn't look like it's going to. Oh, yeah, it is. There we go. Um, tonight, we're doing a red breast rundown. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the 12, the 12 cast strength, the Lestal, uh, the 15-year-old, and the 21-year-old, but we're going to taste and grade or i'm going to taste and grade and then my buddy who i will introduce in just a sec will do the same um we're going to taste and grade this beautiful style here and the 15 year old here which are the only two that i actually haven't reviewed on the channel just yet uh tonight i have a special guest my boy jason from the mash and drum jason why don't you say hello buddy what is up, guys? How you doing? Whiskey in the Six. How you doing, Rob? Thanks for having me on. How you doing, everybody? Uh, really freaking, really excited to come on the channel and uh, have some of my my probably my favorite Irish whiskey brand, Red Breast, man. So I'm I'm excited. I haven't uh, I haven't tried the Lustal yet. I love the 15. So excited to try it with you, man. Yeah, honestly, um, pleasure to have you. By the way, um, but the Lustal is pretty new to me too. I only took out about a, like a neck pour of this in like uh about a week ago and then i didn't touch it again the 15 i've just had about two or three drams out of so those are relatively new for me but i've had a chance like i said to do the 12 the 12 cash strength which you and i agree we both absolutely love and yep. then um i've had the the 21 year old probably before i had the rest of them to be honest with you because i tend to go big first and then realize i should have started the journey a little bit smaller um that's, <laughs> that's usually the way i do it uh jeremy from the chat is saying nice shirt to me um i figured i wore your shirt on his live stream the other night so i would wear jeremy's shirt on tonight's live stream i thought that would only be fair yeah he, he just he just told me that my shirt's okay so <laughs> that's, that's the um so jason quick backstory for those watching uh jason and i exchanged shirts uh but the shirts that i had in stock were only my kickboxing shirts i didn't have any whiskey shirts at the moment so i sent him a kickboxing shirt as a temp for when i actually get him uh one of the whiskey in the six shirts so. yeah but this shirt this shirt has inspired me uh dude so when i if i have a whiskey i don't like i just fucking kick it <laughs> <laughs> awesome. love it <laughs> nice <laughs> um so i'm gonna just quickly go through the chat here because there's quite a bit of people in uh, we got Brian Page. We already mentioned Jeremy from Super Social Club. Uh, Gregor, what's going on, buddy? We got Go Habs. How are you, brother? We got Thomas Buck. We got Jez. How are you guys? It's late for Jez, actually. Jez Body. What's going on, brother? Uh, Eric Waits in the house. My Bourbon Journey. Scott, how are you, buddy? Um, we got Pressmen. We got Travis H. All right, so quite the crowd already. Looks like it's going to be a good night. Um, you got your red breast Lestal already poured? Yes, I do. I got it actually, and uh, this will make uh, Jeremy happy. I'm uh, got a glass from Jeremy. I sip and I know things, so I've got it. the Lestal in his glass. So he doesn't like my shirt, but he probably likes his own glass. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that glass too because I love the saying. Um, that's from my favorite show of all time, as most people know, Game of Thrones. So. Uh, and one of my favorite characters in any show ever, probably of all time as well. So um, we got Zach saying hello. What's going on, buddy? And Kale also saying hello. How are you? Danny's in the house. Very cool. Do you see how many people we have in? I'm not exactly sure. Uh, right now we got 27 in the chat. Right on. Yep. Okay. So um, you actually told me a cool story about the Lestal. Did you want to run through that really quickly again? Um, yeah, so, so the Lestal, um, from when I was reading up on it, doing some uh, some research like I like to do on a whiskey, it's uh, it's 9 to 12 years old between that age range. So what they do is they take uh, their single pot still uh, Irish whiskey. They have some of it uh, f uh, aging in ex-bourbon, some of it in ex-sherry. Then they vat it, marry it together, in, and then they uh, that goes into a first fill Oloroso sherry casks um, from a, a company called, I think it was saying like Besto Lustau or something like that, which is where it gets its name. Uh, I couldn't really find out exactly how long it, it sits and it marries in there, but 
Uh, once it marries in there for a certain amount of time, it's taken out. It's non-chill filtered and 46% ABV. So it's, yeah. a really, it's a really good proof point. And um, what's cool about it is they actually say right on the box in partnership with Lustau, um, matured in the finest hand-selected sherry casks. So a lot of companies choose not to put the company they get their casks from on their box or on their bottles, or actually they don't provide that information at all for the most part. Uh, but obviously these guys work hand in hand with this company to feel comfortable and give them the promotion there. So maybe it's an exclusive partnership uh, between the two companies. I'm not hundred percent sure on that, but I would like to maybe confirm that in the future for these guys. Yeah. Um, I mean, we, me, me and you were talking already. The, I mean, our favorite is obviously the 12 cast strength. We love that stuff. Yeah. I, I have a bottle right here that I just got another one. I go through it like crazy. I love it, but these yeah. these two these two are a little bit more unique. So, yeah, the the twelve cash strength is next level. Um, Irish whiskey as a whole, when it's cash strength, it, it produces these like bonkers type like fresh fruits like mangoes and peaches and like cantaloupe and all these crazy fresh fruits that I really love. Um, mm -hmm. And I find that uh, for the most part, and I know there's a little bit of sherry influence in the 12 cast strength. I think actually, I'm not hundred percent sure on that one, but I'm pretty sure. Um, but I think that like when done in the next bourbon cask, that stuff gets to shine. Like the Irish quality to a whiskey gets to shine through even more, uh, than if it's aged in a little bit of wine casks. But I do feel that red breast does it very well where they mix a little bit of ex bourbon cask and a little bit of sherry cask to get that beautiful marriage. Yeah, I like that single pot still um, character too. It really gives it a good bite. So yeah. I've, I've always enjoyed that about single pot still, not just Irish, but just whiskeys in general. Yeah. You got the, um, the Listau poured there right yeah. now? No, it's been opening up here for the last probably, uh, probably since we jumped on about 20 minutes. Yeah, same with mine. So um, I don't know if you get you get it, but it's there. there's like a – it's like a waxy, like orange peel kind of note on the nose. I don't know if you get that. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's like a lemon candle, but I'm getting, um, I'm getting figs. Yeah, I can see like a fresh, like um, not fresh figs, but like uh, my wife buys these figs from Costco that come in like a, a like a whatever a sealed bag, and they're actually um. They're dried figs. Yeah, but, absolutely. It's more. It's a little bit more concentrated. Not like a fresh fig, but like yeah. a. Yeah. Yeah, I do get that. I get a good amount of oak in here. I mean, I guess from the three different casks, yeah. I, there's, there's a good oak spike in here. What do you think? Yeah, absolutely. You can tell there's like some good cask influence on this, and despite being relatively young, uh, it's still getting quite a bit of that like refined oak. Yeah. Jez, uh, Jez is asking me, what do I think of the red spot 15 off topic, but I want to know your opinion. I will get to that a little bit later. Jez don't remind me later. Wow. It, this is really, uh, it's really fruity on the nose. Yeah. Yeah. And see, and this is what I'm kind of talking about when it comes to like aged in a sherry cask. I don't get all the, like, I wouldn't be able to identify this as an Irish whiskey off the hop. If mm -hmm. you handed this to me and said, what, what region is this from or whatever? Like I would probably be pretty, uh, stumped just because I'm used to a certain type of smell from Irish whiskey and the, the pot still might give a little bit of it away, but it wouldn't be enough for me to just be confident in saying this is Irish whiskey. This, this actually smells like some X, uh, some finished bourbons that I've had on the nose. I'm sure it's not that way on the palate, but on the nose, I can get yeah. that. A bit. Yeah, no, I, I actually agree with that. It's like, like it's very, it's very close to. I don't know if you've had the um, the wild turkey revival, yep, uh, which has a really nice faint. It's not over sherry done. Doesn't have a ton of sherry, but it's in good balance, and that's what I'm getting on this one. Yeah, actually, I I picked that up. Now that you mentioned it, I picked that up a lot. There's another one that Peter White sent, it gave to me. It was um, aged in a, a wine cask as well. I just can't remember what it's called, but this definitely you're bang on right there. Peter White's actually in the chat. Maybe he can remind me what it was called. It's actually really good whiskey. It's yeah. American whiskey. All right, you ready to go for a taste, buddy? Yeah, let's do it. All right, cheers. Cheers.
Oh, wow. That's totally different than the nose. <laughs> yeah, definitely different than the nose. Um, less of the like waxy note, more of like a sweet, like syrupy note. This is, this is a uh, honey on, uh, on toast. <clears throat> yeah, mm. I get that. So Peter's saying, say again, um, that, that finished bourbon that you gave to me a while back, I forget it has a unique, a unique name. It's not very popular. It doesn't, I don't think it's available in Ontario. Yeah. Mm. Definitely very different than the nose. Yeah, it's it's. I mean, it is sweet. You're getting some like good candy, but I'm surprised at how spicy it is. Mm -hmm. You're getting like that peppery finish on the back of the on the right on the back on the finish. It's really nice. Yeah, uh, I believe these guys are always um, malted and unmalted barley, but I could be wrong. Hmm. I'll double check that. Yeah, that's really nice. Very buttery candy. Mm. That creamy, like almost like a honey butter, is something I get a lot on uh, Irish whiskeys, uh, mm. especially the ones that are a little bit higher in proof. I think forty six percent. I really would love for them to do to erase the forty percent twelve year old and just do a forty six percent twelve year old. But I guess because they have the cash strength, they want to make something for everybody. Yeah, I agree. Is uh, this, does, does Red Breast, does Red Breast triple distilled as well? Yeah, I think all Irish whiskeys are triple distilled, but I could be wrong about that. Maybe not every single one, but majority of them are triple distilled. The um, the American whiskey that I was talking about is Amador. Have you ever tried Amador? Oh yeah, I have. Yeah, that was that was in um, that was here in Ohio briefly, and then it went away because it wasn't selling well. Yeah, so it's malted and unmalted barley. Malted and okay. And, and apparently, um, Gregor is saying that it has to be like this if uh, it's a single pot still. Oh, it has to have both. Okay. So that's one of the rules there. Thanks, Donald. Hey, we got Richie Z's in the house. The usual, uh, got some usual suspects. This is really good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So going back to the regular 12 year old 40%, mm -hmm. I would probably like, I, I remember reviewing that. I don't remember what I gave it, but. Comparing it to this, I would say this is probably like an 84, 85 for me. And then the 12 year old would probably be like an 80, like a 79, 80. I think it could be so much better if it was at least 43%, but you lose so much of it because it's at 40. So I would say 79 to 80, but this is probably like an 84, 85 for me. Yeah. I mean, I generally don't do ratings, but if I had to rate this, I would. I would probably, knowing your rating system, I would agree with you just because I, it, it's definitely a step above the regular 12, just based just on the proof alone and the extra flavors yeah. that are in there, I think. I really yeah, enjoy I think, it. Yeah, I think if the 12 was 46, it might actually beat this. Um, but there is some 12-year-old in this, right, as yeah. you were saying? Yeah. So, yeah, remember, nine, nine, 9 to 12 years old. Um Nine to twelve year old uh, single pot still Irish whiskeys in here. Yeah, I mean, for it's around eighty dollars or seventy five dollars, something like that, at the LCBO. What it, what was it uh, in Ohio? The Lustau is um, is sixty. Uh, it's actually We're looking at something. It's cheaper, about it's cheaper than the cash strength. Yeah, the uh, cash strength uh, is a little bit more expensive here as well. I think it's about $110, $115. Yeah. Like hey, we got uh, 53 in the chat. Nice. Uh, Eric Wade said traditionally they didn't use as much malted barley in order to avoid taxes on malted barley. Uh, oh, that's interesting. And yes, you're right, Eric. They do need the malted barley for the enzymes to get that sweetness. So Yeah. I think mm -hmm. it's easier to ferment as well if it's malted as opposed to unmalted. I yeah. Think um, a lot of distillers, um, especially in Canada, when they don't malt uh, rye, they have a lot of trouble getting that fermented. Like it's it's very difficult for them. Yeah. So as I keep sipping this, that bite is starting to level out, and now I'm just getting all sweet candy. Yeah. Yeah. And even on the nose, it's getting sweeter as I go. Yeah. It's getting a lot more fruit forward. This is like a 
I'm getting like a strawberry jam note on here. It's crazy. Yeah. It's actually really nice. Like I would assume uh, like it's an 84 now for me, but I'm really high up on the bottle. I, I would assume like when it gets to about the halfway point, I, it could go up to like an 86, 87 for me. Um, I like it a lot. And the price points there, like there's not a ton of scotch in that price range that, um, that's worth it with, because of the ABV and all the all different characteristics that we look for when it goes to, uh, it comes to whiskey. So yeah, I like this stuff. Yeah, it's I good. I, I like it. I don't know. I mean, I could probably, for me, I would probably go with the 12 cast rank still over this, but I think if I'm in the mood, the Lestat would be a, it's a really beautiful whiskey. It's nice. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so for me, I would probably give the 12 cast strength and 90, 91. If I were to re-review it, mm -hmm. um, the SMWS Bushmill is better by a touch and it's a lot more expensive. It's like 300 bucks. So because of that, I give them like a tie in mark because when all things considered that, that red breast 12 year old cash rank, this is just beautiful stuff. Yeah. And you gotta, you gotta factor in price and all that into it. So that's what makes a big difference. Wow. Yeah. So, so for me, like I would give, I would give the red breast 12 a 91. So for me, it would be uh 79 for the 12 at regular 40%. The Lestal would be around an 84. Uh, the 15, we're going to find out in just a sec, but I think it's somewhere between an 84 and a 90. And then <clears throat> the 21 for me, I would probably give that an 87 if I had to re-review it, um, maybe even lower because it's really expensive as well. And I do think that the 15 is just as good, if not better, but we're yeah. going to get to the 15 in just a sec. Yeah. Um, Peter White, Peter White said his bottle, <clears throat> his bottle of Lustau was open for a year and has really mellowed out. And I could, I could actually probably see that because just sitting in the glass, it's mellowed out a bit. So uh, Donald is saying that Irish laws stipulate pot stills have to have at least 30% malted, unmalted barley and up to 5% other grains. Interesting. Oh, cool. Hey, uh, Scott's in the house from uh, Scotch Test Dummies. How you doing, man? Hey, Scotty. What's going on, buddy? Got a lot of wrenches in the chat. I got quite a few. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, man. You're just, you're just giving them out, aren't you? <laughs> 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 Scott was the original moderator. Oh, Scott was the first, huh? Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, I like that list out. That's good. Yeah, it's nice. Honestly, that's an easy sipper. I would definitely have that on my bar when available. Good stuff. You can't. You you will not be disappointed. Yeah, um, if you're yeah if you're a sherry head, then uh, and like Irish whiskey, I think that that's that's a a perfect perfect Irish whiskey for you. Yeah. All right, we're going to move on to the 15, but um, Peter White already gave us his disclaimer that the 21 takes the 15 out to the woodshed. Oh, okay. Um, when I, I remember opening my, my bottle of the 21-year-old and just being super disappointed, and it wasn't because it wasn't good. It was good. It just – it was so much hotter than I expected it to be at 21 years old. Um and I've always struggled with that age for some reason. Like I've always found that 21 year old whiskey always tends to be a little hotter than I want it to be or than I expect it to be anyway. I don't know. I find that 18 year old some most times is a little bit less, less hot. I don't Maybe not less hot. I don't know. It's weird. I end up liking 18 year olds a little bit more than 21 year olds. <laughs> Eric Wade said, contrary to popper belief, pot stills have nothing to do with marijuana. <laughs> and also contrary to popular belief, I was talking about whiskey, not women then. <laughs> <laughs> Sipper Social Club with the 666 uh, Super Chat says, to the well-dressed gentlemen, cheers. Thank you very much, buddy. Thanks a lot, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you're on the 15 right now? Yeah, honestly, with this one, you get so much more dark fruit, which is why it's weird for me that they make such a, um emphasis on the sherry casks with the Lestau, whereas like with the 15, I get dark fruit with this one. Uh, I, I would completely agree. The nose is completely different, but I get more uh, bourbon notes on this one. There's a little bit more of a, of a caramel type aspect to it to go along with those dark fruits. It's really nice. So Gregor is saying that... Uh, what I said about the 21-year-old is because um, 
the red breast 21 is more bourbon casks than sherry um but it needs time so i'm not sure did i say it live or did i just say it to you how i prefer my irish whiskey <laughs> you just said it live <laughs> i said it live right so it's yeah. ex bourbon cask as opposed to sherry cask yeah 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 no i do i i really do prefer ex bourbon specifically uh when it comes to irish whiskey because i feel like it allows the distillery characteristic to shine through more um i'm coming out with a video on the Tyrconnell 16 which i don't have up here anymore um and you guys will see what i mean by that because it's just uh ex bourbon cask only and it's beautiful stuff yeah the so, so it's really nice yeah the, this the nose on this one i like already over the lustau but yeah. so, so this one's 46 percent abv as well yep it's all are also and bourbon also non-chill filtered i feel like there's more sherried influence in this one than any other of the red breast in my yeah opinion. it's it's there's definitely coming off this the lustau is it smells it smells um like a younger whiskey this is way more just has a lot of nice sweet oak and it's just more rounded yeah man this is like more of that toast and honey butter but it's just overlaid with like dark fruits it's delicious yeah i agree really good on the nose yeah, Peter White saying, now the Tyrconnell 16 is amazing with an amazing price at the LCBO. That's a 16-year-old, 46%, unchill filtered, no added color, single malt Irish whiskey, and it's um, 100 bucks, so like 99 bucks Canadian, which I thought it was a great price. Yeah, that's not bad. Mm. That makes it, what, like 80 bucks for you or something like that? I'm out. I'm out. You're getting, a, you're getting that lemon note on this one too? Yeah, there is a bit, like on the back end. Mm -hmm. You really got to kind of fish for it, but it's there. Yeah, definitely. In color, it's a little darker in color as well than the um, Lestal. I probably don't pronounce that properly, but I don't care. <laughs> That's how I say it, Lestal. <laughs> you got to say it with, uh, you know, like a, like you got to say it with some punch. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's good. All right, ready to go yeah, in? The nose is really nice on this one. I'm going to go in. Yeah, the nose is awesome. Cheers. Cheers. So soft. Oh. But on the back end, you get that spice a little bit. Oh, yeah, I like that. I like that better. That's good. <laughs> Honestly, and I, I, want, I want Peter White, if he has both, pour a glass of each, the 21 and the 15, and just sip them side by side and tell me which one's hotter. Try to forget which... <laughs> do it like in the dark or something try to like just mark the glasses or something yeah if i if i have to if i have to compare this to almost a, like a scotch you have the lagavulin 8 versus the lagavulin 16 yeah the lagavulin 16 is aged longer it's more it's it's more rounded has deeper flavors but you lose that bite that the 8 has and i think these two are doing kind of that same thing does that make sense yeah, absolutely. See, and and there's also with peated scotch, I like that bite. I want that bite. Yeah. Whereas like with a sherried scotch, I want that smoothness, like that sweet rounded flavor that I'm looking for. You know what I mean? Whereas uh, with a peated scotch, I want something more bold in your face. Punch me. You know what I mean? Yeah, I like the I like that hard kind of spice kick from a good peated scotch. That's why I'm kind of leaning towards the Brook Lottie stuff now. Mm -hmm. just that barley, the finishes on it are just incredible. I really like them a lot. Mm. Uh, Gregor saying, if you guys can put your hands on 15 year old uh, first editions 2005, it is way more impressive than future batches. <clears throat> Oh. I really like this. Honestly, I think this is really good. This is, yeah, I like the 15 a lot. Hey, Party Source is in the house. What's up, J.O.? What's going on, Party Source? Mm. How many do we have right now? 58. I can never find the, the number. I don't know. <laughs> it's so bad. It's because I minimize so many boxes so I can have so much like going on on this thing at the same time. <laughs> That's really nice. I, yeah, I'm, I'm already, I, I do like the bite on the Lustau. That peppery finish. 
but the the 15 just is so much really just has a really beautiful rounded flavor and i'm getting more sherry notes on that one yeah it, the 15 is that one where you can pour it anywhere just be relaxed and just drink and not have to like think too much or worry too much like concentrate too much it's just a good all-around easy drinker in my opinion and it's 46 percent, so it's not like it's giving it to you at like a baby proof it's yeah it's actually if you take if you if you let it sit and take a little break the pepper kind of comes it starts yeah. It starts making itself known. But if you just keep sipping this thing, you'll probably never get it. <laughs> no, you're right. you're right. But it's one of those where you can finish it quickly because it's a little too easy to drink almost. Hey, Daniel's in the house. Hello, it's my two favorite jabronis. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, Daniel? All the best to you, your family, buddy. Hopefully hopefully, uh, dad recovers well. Yeah, I hope, uh, hope your dad's doing good, Daniel, man. Uh, prayers to, uh, to you and your family and your dad, man. Absolutely. Mm. Well, that 15 is awesome. Yeah, I really like it, man. I, yeah, you know yeah. what? Honestly, I'm going to stick by what I said earlier. If I, had to, <laughs> <laughs> if I had to mark the 21, I'd probably give it an 87, which is a good mark. It's good whiskey. Uh, I just expect more when I'm getting up to that $250 mark. Uh, but for 120 bucks, so half the price, less than half the price, I'd rather this. So I'm going to give this one an 88. Uh, I think this is really good. Mm. Yeah, for, you know what? For the price difference, yeah, I mean this this is awesome. Mm. <laughs> this <laughs> Scotty from the Scotch says dummies put Daniel on a timeout already. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the power of the wrench. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Daniel gets timed out. <laughs> now he just gets timed out for like typing hello. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think he used the word uh, jabroni's wrong. <laughs> last uh, last when we were on Jeremy's um, stream the other night, if they if people use the word jabroni, they had to drop a super chat, and you had to pay for your jabroni usage. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. <laughs> 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 that was awesome so yeah uh, it, it ended up being really funny actually it was the running joke of the night uh donald rance had a pretty cool comment he said uh the 15 is the dark brooding often ignored middle child of the red breast range <laughs> that maybe that's why i like it so much because i'm a middle child so <laughs> it's yeah. the uh it's the army of the second sons where we're paid uh military because we don't get we don't inherit anything I love the 15 man sold. That's yeah. that's a beautiful Irish whiskey. Yeah, that's good. And and the thing is, like price point wise, it's worth the extra, in my opinion, than the red breast La Stout or the, the 12 year old uh at 40%. Yeah, you're just you're just gonna get a much um a much nice <laughs> it's already starting the jabronis <laughs> jo with the jabroni super chat <laughs> thanks jo appreciate it buddy you can call me a jabroni anytime you drop a five with it <laughs> yeah the um oh man yeah the 15 is good <laughs> brendan knight's asking if you could smell it all the rock isms are going to be coming out tonight now that like this is going to be a thing now that J daniel started this jabroni talk yeah. all the rock isms come out can you smell it yeah we might we might have to uh we might have to like do a monthly uh like team up and and do like a whole like a rock jabroni night <laughs> the funny thing is like Jabroni is not even an Italian word, but Daniel uses it as like a derogatory Italian slang word. Like, yeah, because it ends in O and I, like macaroni. Yeah. So that's all he knows. Yeah. He's like, oh, macaroni, jabroni, Italian, go for it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, Richie G just said, can you smell what the throttle is cooking? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, what's up, Santa Cruzin? What's going on, Santa Cruz? A lot of blue in the chat tonight. Yeah, dude. Okay. How many wrenches have you doled out? Jeez. So, so Richie, <laughs> uh, Santa Cruz, um, Peter White. We got uh, uh, Scotty from Scotch Test Dummies, and then Jeremy. So, so five. 
five five ranches. <laughs> That's awesome. What was happening is there was nights where like I wouldn't have a wrench in the chat, so I'd be like having a conversation, and people are like going guns blazing on the chat, saying things that like are inappropriate, offending people. <laughs> So well, now, we, got, we, got 70, we got 70 in the chat now waiting for the for the next jabroni drop <laughs> i should just like award everybody everybody a wrench and then they'll be sure to tune in <laughs> <laughs> so jeremy said so many wrenches here whiskey throttle has no chance <laughs> <laughs> none of that stuff's gonna slip through the slip through the chat this time oh that's good i like this honestly i really really like this that's a great buy for yeah i'm 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 buying another bottle yeah mm. yeah that's an easy drinker it's a little too easy i can get in trouble with this one yeah the the cast strength you can you know you could sip on that for a little bit but you can definitely get in a little bit of trouble sipping that i mean it's so good but it's you know that, that high proof but this being at 46 it's so well rounded fruity honey butter lemon it's one of the Probably one of the oldest uh, Irish whiskeys I've had. Haven't had too many older than this. The the oldest is the twenty one for me, but the um, second oldest in the cast strength is the um, the, the Bushmill that I actually sorry I had the sixteen year old Turconnell, but that Bushmill at cast strength is crazy. <laughs> DJ DJ one one said. So what is the people's whiskey? <laughs> 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 Probably the fifteen. I think the fifteen. The most people would like the fifteen. It's delicious. Mm. Yeah, I think if you're a Scotch drinker, you'll love the 15. If you're an Irish whiskey uh, drinker, you're going to love the 15. If you're a bourbon drinker, I think that's a great way to transition into Irish is the 15, to be honest with you. So there's always the there's always that stigma that, you know, Irish whiskey is is the smooth because it's triple distilled and it's it's supposed to be really easy to drink and really easy to sip. And I feel like as as good as that is i feel like it gets a almost a bad rap sometimes because of that yeah i agree and it's actually sometimes um it's actually surprising because it's a little bit more peppery than you would expect for it to be uh triple distilled right like uh, you don't like it's a lot more meaty than people <laughs> are expecting i think <laughs> that is 99 cents um <laughs> Scotty's Scotty's <laughs> asking me to give somebody a wrench that uh, a huge fan from Facebook actually uh, recently. <laughs> I'm not going to mention any more than that, but uh, <laughs> yeah, Scotty wants me to give that guy a wrench. Whiskey Throttle said, so this playful insult meaning a rube or loser to the 1920s when Italian immigrants brought over a similar sounding Milanese term for ham. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's what Jabroni is. Like he just dropped the uh, the the meaning. Great. That that's straight out of Urban Dictionary that The Rock wrote himself. Probably. <laughs> hey, what's up, Bourbon Saying? What's up, Chris? It's jabroni rhymes with baloney. Yeah, baloney. Jabroni. <laughs> hey, man, you want to uh, you want to sip some cast strength? Mm. I don't have the twelve cast strength with me, unfortunately. Um, but I definitely have something cast strength here. We can, we can improvise. All right. What do you got? Um, man, name it. <laughs> what do you have over there? Maybe we'll <laughs> um, I could do a, you want me, I could do a quick, uh, you want to do your, uh, your green spot that, that special one. I'll do the red spot. Yeah, we can do that. So All I right. got this. yeah, let's do that. That's a good idea. All right, cool. All right, so I got this green spot here that um, I'll be reviewing next Thursday. It's finished in a Zinfandel wine cask from um, from uh, Calistoga Napa Valley, Chateau Montalena, Lena, Montalena, and then that's uh, Eric White's Eric White's cue to go off about the Chateau Montalena. <laughs> <laughs> Eric Wade just said a jabroni is what Italian hockey players used to clean the ice on the rink. <laughs> <laughs> that's a Zamboni. Yeah, that's a Zamboni, buddy. <laughs> so that's the uh, one I'm sipping right now, where I'll be moving on to anyway. Um, you want to show yours? Yours is actually much more interesting, in my opinion. <laughs> All right, yeah, so this is um... – 
So this is the red spot. This is a new release. This is a single pot still, um, matured 15 years, combination of American oak ex bourbon, ex sherry butts uh, from the Mitchell family, uh, who makes you know green spot, yellow spot. Um, so I have I have sipped on this a little bit, and I find it like most green spots and even the yellow spot. This one is getting better as it sits. I'm going to do a full review of this one, but I feel like it's getting a little bit better. I'm probably actually going to do a two-part review on this one uh, when I first open it and then and when I sip it down because it's changing so much each time I go back to it. It's really it's a really interesting uh, Irish whiskey. Um, Chris is asking, are all the green spots finished in this? No, there's a bunch of different act, uh, red wine casks that they use for green spot. Um, they use a bunch of different casks in general for green spot, which is, it's the, is it the only one without an age on it? It's the only non-age statement because the yellow spots, 12 years old, I believe. And mm -hmm. the red spots, 15. Um, what I love about it is they actually put like a green spot actually right on the cap there. It's pretty cool. Yeah. And yeah. The, the red spot the is, uh, the red spot is matured for at least 15 years in a combination of American bourbon, Spanish sherry butts and Marsala wine casks. Oh wow! Uh, triple, dis triple distilled, and it comes in at forty six percent. So it's Irish with a touch of Italian in it. That's right. It's a, uh, it's an Iralian. I don't know how you say that. <laughs> uh, ask a Boston, uh, a dude from Boston. They'll know. There's there's a whole bunch of Irish Italians out there. Yeah, Peter White saying, "What's the cost in the bottle?" Uh, MSRP on this bottle, I believe, is about one hundred twenty, one hundred thirty ish American. Right on. Gregor saying, how about Sambuca? One of my first favorite Italian spirits long before. So Sambuca was was the Italian spirit that I spent many of my younger years getting drunk on. Um, I've long since moved away from Sambuca. Had some bad experiences. <laughs> I don't uh, how about you, Jake? <laughs> I never I never liked black licorice and, and I knew it the first time my grandmother put it in my uh, my espresso when I was like 10. <laughs> yeah they that they tended they yeah my grandmother used to do the same thing that was good times yeah she's like try this it's uh it's 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 a good it's a good i'm like oh my god mom please. it's just all it is is like black licorice and simple syrup that's what it basically tastes like yeah basically it's yeah. black liquor if you're a black licorice fan then zambuca and is that and is that though all that stuff is that that's right up your alley but i'm yeah. not a black licorice guy they used to like light it on fire back in the day and then do the shot. Like that. <laughs> exactly. Like, that's right. Darwinism at, at its finest right there. My, um, grandpa, my, my grandfather used to, uh, he used to have like these, you know, secret poker games with his buddy down in the basement around his, uh, around, he used to make wine. So right. he'd sit downstairs surrounded by, uh, by his, by his wine barrels that he, that dude aged it for right to the point when, the uh the, the sugars would turn to alcohol he would he'd be pouring the bottles already he didn't even wait to age it he was just yeah. drinking it <laughs> crazy. My still does that yeah so uh, <laughs> so yeah we would we would go downstairs and uh he would you know i would like run down and bring him and his friends um all the you know the prosciutto and the cheese so while yeah. they're playing they could snack and they're drinking wine and they're drinking and at the end of the night my grandmother would bring down the espresso for the guys and I would follow and put the Sambuca in the middle of the table. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. That's honestly like, it sounds like we've had pretty similar upbringings. So I, think so. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> Just want to quickly say hello to a few people that I've been uh, neglecting in the chat here. Not on purpose. Of course, we're just indulging a little bit on these uh, awesome Irish whiskeys tonight, guys. Um, Steve A, what's up? We got Moose76. How are you, buddy? Explore time. What's going on? We got Kev. I'm not going to pronounce the last name again because la the other day I butchered it. I apologize. Um, we we said hello to Donald before. Thomas Buck as well. Uh, the the whiskey friend. What's going on, buddy? It's late for you. How are you? Hey, Alan, man. Thanks, Alan. For coming yeah. in. I love Alan's channel, man. He's got, a, he's got a good thing going. Keep it up, Alan. So there's the whiskey friend and then above that, Alan Le Pen. So I guess two Allens. Oh, two Allens. Cool. Right on. Very cool. Um, 
And then Catherine Bono, what's going on? How are you? All right, so what are you getting? So yours, I forgot. So yours is finished in what kind of wine cask? So it's a California Zinfandel, which actually, honestly, not not exaggerating. California Zins, the red, like red California Zins have become one of my favorite go-to wines. Like my wife and I really enjoy uh, California Zins. They're, they're actually really, really nice tasting. Um, the problem with them is they tend to get a little bit expensive for wine, in my opinion, but. Okay. But this is really nice on the nose. It's changed a lot. And this might be, I mean, we know this happens a lot with various types of whiskey, but this is definitely happening uh, with Irish whiskey quite often uh, where it gets better as it op it's opened up for a, a little bit of time. Mm. Scotch Eskimo drops a super chat, says, it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, who, who just dropped that super chat? Scotch Eskimo. It doesn't matter who dropped it. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I, I, I walked right into that one. Yeah, you did. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, um, the Zinfandel is a very respectable choice. Actually, in Italian, there's... Uh, well, the, the same grape uh, varietal, I guess it's called. I'm going to sound very eight, uh, Eric Waitish at the moment, but um, Primativo is is uh, Zinfandel, technically. So there's some really, really nice Primativos as well. I, I tend to, like, flock to those kinds of uh, wines with my pasta. Loch Ness is, going, is in the chat. What's going on, buddy? How are you? Hey, what's up, Loch Ness? Nice to see you, man. Hey guys, if you haven't yet, hit that like button for Rob. All right, so on the nose on the 15. So like I said, this has changed since I first opened it. Um, it was a little bit tame when I first opened it. So I was getting a little bit nervous and I'm like, man, I paid 100, you know, 20 bucks for this. And now it's, it's, it's not what I was hoping for on the nose. But right now, it's as it's opened up, I got it past the shoulder. It's it's really it's really beautiful on the nose. This is just all dried fruits. There's some there's a, there's a walnut characteristic here. Nice. Almost a bit of a touch of smoke that I get, but it's really sweet on the nose. That masala influence is almost like that chestnut, that roasted yeah. chestnut type flavor. Yeah. It's 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 a it, it's coming out more and more as the as it opens up. So if, if any of you out there find the red spot. It's it's going to need some time to open up. Gregor is saying uh, primitivo <laughs> in, <that> thing, <laughs> in capital letters, and then he said, "Would you believe never tried a Barolo? Um, oh, really? A Barolo finished Springbank unopened. Um, Barolo, I guess that's uh, the grapes. Or the, I know they use Barolo uses French wine casks, mm -hmm. but I don't know if they use the same uh, like French wine grapes. Um, I don't, I'm not." I'm not gonna touch that one because I'm I'm not Eric. Eric knows this stuff. He's he's commenting now about Zinfandel is primitivo in Italy, which is the same thing as something in Croatia. Yeah, I'm not gonna try to butcher that word right there. George hey. Kaplan's in the house. What's going on, buddy? How are you? Hey, what's up, George Kaplan? Thanks for coming in. Barolo is uh, Nebbiolo. Nebbiolo grape. Actually, Eric, what's the uh, what grape is is that they use to make a multiple channel? Because I think a multiple channel is probably my favorite Italian wine. Mm. Take care, Jo. Nice seeing you, man. Coming in. Grazie mille, amico. That's from uh, Gregor. You're welcome, buddy. Prego. Prego, man. Prego. <clears throat> So Richie Z, Richie Z said, I agree. I bought the Jameson 18. Um, yeah, what did you, have you had the Jameson 18? That's one I've been, it's actually not a bad price here in Ohio. And I've been debating on whether to try it or not. It's, it's kind of a still of a low ABV. Yeah. Which, which that, does not good. excite me. Actually, they changed the packaging. They made it look really cool. Um, it's almost swayed me, but not quite, man. I keep looking at that 40%. I just can't pull the trigger. Yeah. <laughs> I, it's such a bad trait like when i buy cognac i never look at the abv because i know that cognac tends to be a little hotter than um than whiskey even at a lower abv and i like that about cognac it's got that like nice cigar like pepperiness um yeah yeah 
So I never worry about what the ABV is on a cognac when I buy a cognac, but for whiskey, yeah, I always I can't do it. I can't buy a full. I, I actually enjoy bourbons that are finished in cognac. I think it does it adds a nice character to it. Uh like cognac and um uh what's the other one I really like when it's usually finished in? Uh cognac and not, I mean, some if sherry is done right on a bourbon, it could be really good. The way the wild turkey did it, sometimes it's over sherry. I'm not a fan of port finished uh, bourbons. They tend to be overly sweet. Yeah, uh, bourbon's already sweet. I feel like it doesn't need that extra sh uh, that extra sweetness. But if you do it in a, a cognac cask, is 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 really good. Um, I do like a PX though. I think over the Oloroso and a finished bourbon. I think yeah, it just I adds, can see that. It adds more of a nutty character to it, which I like. There's like a peanut butter and jam um, note that I get off of a good PX whiskey. So yeah. that like um, this this particular this green spot Zinfandel, it's super drying. Like it's almost drying off like the the tip of my tongue. That's like it's super oak influenced. Um, Richie Z is saying my favorite go to cognac is Martel Cordon Bleu. That's a good one. Uh, the whiskey friend is saying cheers rob cheers jason love you uh, both your work uh, sorry love both your channels um he's up very late thank you for tuning in uh alan we really appreciate uh, appreciate yeah, it thanks for coming in alan appreciate it man and then gregor is saying i wish we were closer so you could try my cast strength indie or ob's nacho filter kind that would be crazy to try. oh my god i've never had a, a cast strength cognac oh man that would be in, insanely good. That would be so good. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna taste this now and see what I could get here. I'm very curious about that because I didn't know it was uh, Marsala cask. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, it's again. This is this is my third time sipping this, and it's already changed. It's the finish on it is pretty long. This comes in, as I said, this is also uh, 46 percent, 92 proof. So it's a good it's a good proof uh, on it. But you get different sweet flavors, I think, every time you go back to it. It starts off really, really sweet with a, almost a strawberry, that strawberry jam, apricots, peaches. And then that Marsala, um, that Marsala kind of takes over on the finish. If you ever. You mentioned yeah. peaches, and a lot of people link uh, the taste of peaches to any type of marsala finished or marsala even um, liqueur. So, it's yeah, there's there's even I don't know where it's coming from. I'm getting like a touch of smoke on it, and I'm not really sure where that's coming from. I don't know if maybe one of the old sherry butts they use. Yeah, really, like yeah, really interesting. Fat. It's a little bit of a smoke. Uh, excuse me, a little bit of a smoke note there. This is also non-chill filtered, by the way. So you're getting all the all those good flavors in there. Really good. Awesome. Donald is saying uh, the Jameson 18, I think that's a bow or bow street cast strength is the Jameson 18 to buy. Amazing. Um, that's yeah, I, I just read I just read something. They're about to release the next one. Um, it's going to be pretty pricey. I'm not sure what the distribution on it is, but I did read something about it, and it really – it really kind of sparked my interest. I'm like, oh, I would love to try that. I just don't know yeah. if, uh, if I'm ever going to see it. Honestly, like what I've learned very quickly is I absolutely, I love cash strength anything, but I absolutely love cash strength Irish, Irish whiskey. I think it's phenomenal. Like cutting away all those like fruity flavors is such a waste. Yeah. James C just jumped in. What's going on, buddy? Nice to see you. Miguel Torres says, sorry, I'm late to the party. Hello, Whiskey in the Six and Jason. What's going on? Got about, got about 69, 70 watching, man. This is awesome. Thank nice, you. That's all you, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's all me. Um, Whiskey Throttle saying, I have a cast strength single barrel cognac. That's Yeah, you know what? I think SMWS does a couple of them. That I need to – I think he sent – actually – Daniel sent me an SMWS uh, cognac, so I'm assuming that's cast strength um, single barrel, and that was phenomenal. So, uh, Kev Dond, Kev Donde is asking. I have a one liter barrel that contained port, so he seasoned with port that I have finished Lafroy ten. Wanted to age a bourbon, but I need to suggest on a bourbon that is not very sweet. Hmm. A bourbon that's not very sweet. 
Uh, how about how about um E. H. Taylor barrel proof? <laughs> <laughs> I think um no, you know what? The, the rundown that we did the other night at, at Jeremy's place. So um if you guys haven't watched it, Sipper Social Club and I uh we did a all the Buffalo Trace barrel proof bourbons. So not the rice, not whatever else, but just the bourbons. Um and we tasted them blind, ranked them from which one we liked uh, from first to last. And then we tried to guess which one was which. And I mixed up the um, the Blantons came in third, the Blantons uh, straight from the barrel. And then I, I, I mixed that one up with the E.H. Taylor because I hadn't tried the E.H. Taylor. And I was hoping for that one to be better than the Blantons. But it didn't end up being that way. Um, if the E. H. Taylor finished second last, so fourth out of five, and then the Stag Junior finished last. Yeah. If I were to if I were to pick a bourbon that's not overly sweet, I would probably go with a higher rye bourbon, one that has a little bit more bite on the finish. Yeah, that's, that's a good. Not, point. That's not too sweet. Um, you tend to get some of that in a Four Roses. I was just gonna say Four Roses would would do it. Four roses, maybe even. Um, I mean, wild turkey can be. I mean, wild turkey is not typically a high rye. It says it's a high rye, but it's only about twelve or thirteen percent rye in there. But you know, wild turkey has a very big vanilla note, but it also has a very cinnamon, uh, cinnamon, uh, cinnamon, and cherry uh, punch kind of on the end there. Yeah. But I would, I would look for high rye bourbons. I think Blands would be a good one. Blands is a high rye. Uh, yeah, you know what? Actually, Blant Blanton's. Um, other than the straight from the barrel, which I really like, they've they've always kind of disappointed me just because they tend to be less sweet. And then when I'm looking for a cash rank bourbon, I want them to be a little sweeter. So. Yeah. Yeah, but if you're gonna finish it in port, you want something that'll balance the port out. You don't want it sweet on sweet. You want something. Yeah. No, exactly. It. So that would be a great one as well. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. I don't. I don't know if you can get Bell Mead. Uh, but any Bell Mead bourbon is a nice high rye bourbon too. That will probably do. They finish a lot of the uh, the Bell Meads. They do Madeira, they do Sherry, and it plays really well when you finish it. So if you have, if you could find Bell Mead bourbon, that would be perfect to to finish. So that would be my. Those would be my recommendations. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, bourbon saying Chris. That's a good point too. Ancient age which is a Buffalo Trace product, which is also high rye. And that's cheap. You could get some of that and throw it in. Unless you want a higher proof, then you're going to have to pay a little bit more. Um, so uh, Donald Rance is saying, have either of us been able to try the green spot uh, Louisville Barton? Uh, I probably butchered that. But um, I believe I tried. I believe that was the um, green the green spot. Right, yeah, green spot that I uh, tasted in my blind tasting with Roy uh, Aquavite. The the blind tasting that he sent me, I believe that that was one of the whiskeys involved. I could be wrong about that, but I'm pretty sure. Actually, when I went to go buy this, I was actually looking for that one because the LCBO had them both for ninety nine dollars, uh, but I couldn't find the other one, so I I just grabbed this one. I like Zinfandel casks anyway, so I figured I would like this one. Uh, but that one is good. I just, I don't remember too, too much about it because it was in a set of like five or six whiskeys. I can't remember how many I did that day, but, um, and it was blind and I was super nervous that I was going to get them all wrong. Yeah. I did. Yeah. So. <laughs> Eric Wade said port finishing is also a way to put makeup on a young bourbons. Uh, yeah, they, a lot of, a lot of, um, I wouldn't say a lot, a lot of them will, will do that, but you can mask some, some young whiskey with a, with a, with a finish on it. If it's not, you know, up to par. I think that's a whiskey thing in general. Um, like yeah. finishing whiskeys tends to be their way of like, you know, prettying up something that probably wasn't the best to begin with. Uh, that's why they do it. Sometimes it turns out really, really good after the finish. Sometimes it's just still okay, right? Yeah. So as I'm still sipping on the 15 – the, the strawberry note is kind of taking now more of a backseat, and now you're getting into more of a traditional toast, butter, honey type flavor profile, and the Marsala cask now is really shining through. It's pictured like Marsala, but with 
like some caramel mixed in from that bourbon cask. It's it's a really beautiful whiskey. I think it's one of those that's just going to keep changing each time you go back to it. So if you guys are a fan of whiskeys like that, ones that evolve each time you go back to it, then the 15, I just don't know. You know, the proof point is good, but it does not drink like a 46. Yeah, uh, that one I need to try. I The fact that it's Marsala cask makes me like really want to try it. I just bought this one, which I think you'll you'd be cool, like interested in as well. Um, this is a Ben Riek 20 year old single cask Marsala cask. Wow. Yeah. Um, the color on it's pretty crazy. It's still kind of muted. I think I need to let this one open up a little bit. Um, but I have good, like, I'm not giving up on this one because I think it's going to be really, really good once it oxidizes a little bit. But Right now, it's like very muted on the nose, so I'm hoping that. Well, I think I think that's why a lot of people cook with Marsala because when you cook it down, and you and you give it some, you know, you really put some heat and you give it some time, it just gets more robust in flavor. And I think, I think that's that holds true for just kind of sitting in the glass. Yeah, because I had the same experience last night when I was on cast strength with Vito, and I had that MCO one with the Marsala in it. The 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 more I let it sit, the more it just it got more. Um, it, it, it came to the forefront more and more, and it was just delicious. That was one of the most unique, the one of the most unique and delicious scotches I've ever had. Was that was that Port Charlotte MC01 finishing uh, Marsala? It was absolutely delicious. Honestly, I love that. I love that whiskey. I I feel bad because it's it's a travel exclusive, so it's not easy for people to get. But for whatever reason, um, certain places did get that, and I love it. And there's an MRC, which is a Bordeaux cask. Uh, same thing, Port Charlotte. And I, I did them, I reviewed both of them. And the Bordeaux was nowhere near as good as the the uh, Marsala one. Um, and I, I think Jeremy does a review on both of them together. So I won't spoil anything. You guys should check that one out as well. Yeah. But uh, we're going to try to work on getting you a, cast, a bottle of that. And then you can review it yourself. Just want to quickly go to the chat over here because there's a bunch of I see a bunch of red, which means I'm ignoring the chat quite often. I do, uh, I do, I do see Moose seventy six is making his old wrenches in the chat, so because he's not blue, so that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> Every other comment is blue, so. Uh, <laughs> uh, Gregor saying. <clears throat> Donald and to myself, uh, me, same problem with one that one. Uh, too much wine. The Lestal is better. And then Eric Wade is saying that 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 the other green spot, the Louisville Barton, mm -hmm. is uh, a Bordeaux cask. So that's pretty cool. Um, Whiskey Throttle is saying that it's a jabroni thing. That you, that'll be five dollars. Uh, whiskey <laughs> Throttle. <laughs> Put it in the jar. <laughs> Uh, Richie Z is saying red breast 15 is incredibly complex for an Irish whiskey. Um, I, I really want to try it. I think that's going to be a good one. I got to check that one out. Greg is saying about Marsala. Have you tried the Springbank nine year old Marsala? Um, I have not, but that sounds anything Springbank. I'm, I'm willing to try anything. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I reviewed my first Springbank, the Springbank 10 and then this, and then Jason Coates gave me a Springbank, um, the cast strength. And I thought they were both very unique and phenomenal. Really great stuff. Eric Waite saying he has a Bunahaven 13 Marsala cask. Sweet. Marsala really shows itself. Did a side-by-side -side comparison. Uh, and he said that the Marsala was superior. Very interesting. That sounds amazing. I love Bunahaven too. <laughs> um, Donald Rands is saying, do you get the marzipan and cream frosting note on the Montalena? I do actually. That, as soon as he mentioned it, it's funny how that happens. But like, it brought me back to like when I was a kid and my mom used to make a cake and the the vanilla frosting. I would like just like hide and like scoop my finger in it to try to like get a little bit of like, <laughs> what that reminded me of. On the nose for sure. On the palate, not as much, but definitely on the nose. That's what I used to do when my grandmother made uh, lemon cookies, the Italian lemon cookies. She would make the lemon glaze. And I would I would like grab the bowl and like run with it after she poured it, and then she'd chase me around the house with it. It was awesome. <laughs> Whiskey Thrall saying, "Trust me, the entertainment value is worth more than the five dollars." <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, Scotty's asking, there's a 19-year-old uh, the Jag Marsala cask, too. Anyone tried it? I, I don't think I've ever even seen that, Scotty. I saw that. It came out at the exact same time as the Tobomori 21-year-old Manzanilla. And I went with the Tobomori. Uh, I regret going with the Tobamori, but I went with the Tobamori. I think I should have went with the Lejeg because um, my buddy Jasper, my uh, he's uh, become a friend of the channel, a friend of Super Social Club's channel as well, sent me a Lejeg, a G&M Lejeg that was Asian a heritage cask. I thought I brought it upstairs. Yeah, it's right here. It's right here. Oh, wow. Look at that. Oh, Gordon McPhail. Nice. Yeah, and look at the color on this bad boy. So it's not that old. It's like about 12 years old, maybe 11, but um, super dark, 45%. I took a sip of this yesterday. Incredible stuff. Like I'm really looking forward to reviewing this one. Uh, so, yeah, I regret not getting that 19-year-old Marsala Lejeg because I think that would have been amazing. Gregoire, uh, Gregoire is saying, uh, sounds good and less sugary than limoncello. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, my uh, my family makes uh, lemoncello. They also make this thing called cremen. You ever had cremoncello? Yeah, um, yes, I have. Like, um, I have. I've had the limoncello, like limoncello, which which like made with cream, and then I've also had like meloncello, but with cream. Yeah, so those are both. Yeah, they basically take whatever they do the limoncello in, and then they they pour it in a vat of heavy cream, three yeah. pounds of sugar, milk, vanilla. And mix it together and then freeze it. It's it's ridiculous because it's so good though. I, it's so good because in Italy when they make it, they use basically the Italian equivalent of moonshine. Yeah, it's just grain alcohol, and then you have like three shots of it. You're like, oh, this is sweet and delicious. And then <laughs> you try to get up to walk and you just collapse. Yeah, you're absolutely crushed <laughs> after one drink. <laughs> yeah, this is really good. Honestly, um, I'm happy I did this like little like couple of weeks dedicated to Irish whiskey because it took me a while to warm up to Irish whiskey. I'm not going to lie. Um, and what really got me to love Irish whiskey was the 12-year-old Red Breast cast strength. And then I was like, okay, if I'm going to try another Irish whiskey, I want it to be a cast strength. Peter White gave me a sample of an SMWS Bushmill 15-year-old which I recently reviewed because I bought a bottle of it because that sample blew me away. Like I couldn't believe how many flavors I got out of that, um, that beautiful little sample. So really, really good stuff. You, you're not a member yet of SMWS, right? No, but I'm going to be a member very soon. <laughs> yeah, honestly, like it's one of those things because it's a double-edged sword. Every single whiskey I've tried from there has been at least great, if not excellent. Um, but the problem is, uh, Every time you review an SMWS, most people don't really care. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like, it, it's they're expensive. Um, you pay a lot of money for them. You get them. You know you're gonna have an incredible whiskey experience that you and only the people that try it are gonna get to enjoy. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, going back to your to your point about Irish whiskey, um, my introduction to Irish whiskey was college. You know, doing shots of Jameson. Yeah. <laughs> You know, so I at that time, I didn't really, you know, I'm not trying to enhance my palate or anything. I'm just taking shots. Yeah, exactly. So as you move through and you then you see all the different types of Irish whiskeys uh, that there are now kind of like, you know, it's really expanding the way bourbon and scotch has with all the different types of offerings, different people getting in the game. Um, there is some really good variants there. But, you know, the one thing that just kills me for Irish whiskey is normally it's the low proof, which, you know. A lot of the Jamesons are good, you know, but they stay at that 80 proof point. I, I am a huge fan of this one, the Jameson Cask Mates. Um, it's a low proof, but it's got enough flavor to kind of, you know, keep it interesting with that, with that stout finish. Yeah. Um, but, you know, as soon as I tried starting the, the Red Breast and a Teeling I'm a big fan of, uh, the Green Spot, the Yellow Spot, there's a lot of flavors out there to be found in Irish whiskey. And I think it kind of kills the whole, you know, Irish whiskey is just supposed to be this really great Irish whiskey that's smooth. And I think there's a lot more to it than that. So I think a lot of the stuff that's out now kind of debunks that theory, even though, you know, it's still marketed that way, especially from Jameson. Yeah. Um, I, I've yet to have um, 
a Jameson that like blew me away yet, uh, but I don't buy a lot of them. So uh, I'll definitely take your recommendation with that one there and, and we'll see. Um, yeah. If you, if you like stout beer, if you like dark I beer, do. I, I, that's actually the beer that I prefer. If I'm going to drink a beer, I, I prefer like a coffee stout or like a chocolate stout, one of those kinds of things. So yeah, that's, that's what I drink. I just, I like stouts and porters. So I like the, you know, the, that heavy, my favorite beer is probably uh, the one that I could just get regularly is the, um, the founders uh, breakfast stout. So I think that's the one that like everybody raves about up here. And I think it's from near you, isn't it? Um, yeah, I mean, they're pretty close by, but the one that's kind of has the biggest lore is the KBS, which is the uh, Kentucky bourbon stout. Oh. That one only comes out like once a year. It's it's their regular stout that they make, and it's finished in Kentucky bourbon barrels, and everyone goes nuts for it when it comes out. Um, but when that's all sold out, the one that is still there is the the Founders Breakfast Stout. It's like a breakfast in a glass. It's delicious. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. I think I know exactly which one. My brother is a huge, I've been bugging him to do like a, like a brew in the six or something like that. Like a brother company to whiskey in the six. Um, Cause he loves beer and he like, he goes to all the breweries and, and tastes everything and whatever. So I, I've been trying to convince him to do something like a, a brother company, but he doesn't want to do it. <laughs> um, <laughs> So Donald R Rantz is saying that um, the writer's tiers cash strength is is very good, and it's about 170 Canadian at the LCBO. Um, I'm curious between that one and there's another one by the exact same company. Uh, I forget which one it is now. Is it a Middle Middleton? I can't remember if it's Middleton. I don't think it's Middleton. Um, but I want to try that one definitely. Whiskey. Um, a buddy of mine. A buddy. I'll show you the text too. A buddy of mine has a friend. Uh, has a uh, a grandfather. Uh, what did she say here? Um, has a grandfather that found this. Um, the grandfather passed away, and they went behind the bar, and they found this old bottle. And I'll show you the bottle here. Uh, I don't know if you can see this. It's an old Bushmills. Um, can you kind of see that picture? Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead again. I'm gonna click here. Your yeah, there it is. Um, yeah, so it's an old Bushmills uh, bottle here. Um, then we did some research. He sent me some pictures of the tax stamp to kind of find out what year it's from. And uh, we concluded. So it's an unopened bottle. Um, it hasn't even been opened yet. And it's somewhere between years 61 and 77. It's in 15-year unopened Bushmills. That's 86 proof. So I was trying to find out, like, what the value of that was online. And it's it hasn't even been opened yet. It's pretty amazing. Huh. That looks pretty crazy. Yeah, I'm trying to I'm trying to see if I can uh scam a pour off of off of <laughs> <laughs> You gotta do it. You gotta do it. Yeah. <laughs> Someone asked earlier what's in this Highland Park cask. Actually, it's it's a um this is like a faux cask. I, I need to set up it's like a bar uh cask. So what it is is like a like a little spout comes out of this little hole here. You set up a bottle of Highland Park or whatever whiskey you drink uh, on like the regular and then you just like hook it up to this cask and then like press the button and it pours into your glass and that's it. You just share it that way as opposed to like keeping the bottle sealed or whatever. So, yeah, um, Scott was saying it says it on the label. Actually, it doesn't say what year it's from. We were kind of looking at the years, um, but on the you could actually identify the years of the whiskey on the tax stamp that goes across the top. And so that's how we found out what it was. Nice. And, and uh, Antonio from Whiskey Quest is saying it's I'm a real life whiskey thief. You damn right. <laughs> <laughs> so if I have a chance to try something that old, I'm going for it. <laughs> 100. You should. Um, so we got about 19 minutes until the Scotch Four Dummies go live. Okay. Um, what should we do? Should we do one more and then call it a night? Yeah, let's, uh, let's squeeze in one more. What do you got? Uh, we could do whatever you like. We could do something non-Irish if you like. Uh, yeah, sure. I'm trying to think if there's any Scotch I've had that I haven't opened yet. Uh, what do you got near you that you want to kind of crack open and get into? Um, I got so much that I, I just recently picked up this, um, which I'm going to do. So it's a Kalila. It's a Kalila Gordon. Mc, is that coming out? Okay. Yeah. Um, see it. 
Gordon McPhail, aged in first fill sherry butts. It's 13 years old, 52% cast strength. Um, and I also have this smoke, smoked salt orange peel, Kalila SMWS. Um, wow. So that's an 11-year-old right there. And this one is aged in ex uh, refill hoghead and ex bourbon uh, isla cask or ex bourbon cask and it's an isla sorry um so i'm gonna do a head-to-head -head on these when when the uh, irish whiskey month or irish whiskey series is is complete but maybe i'll pour one of those do you have anything peated uh, right now or no uh peated yeah um you know what i i have a uh, i have a bottle that i really enjoy that's been getting better so i want to go back to it and check it out right back has anybody had a chance to try this uh, smoke salt orange peel? Uh, Fifty-three point two five zero. Um, it's a Kalila SMWS. It's really really good. Um, this Gordon McPhail is really really good. I think it's going to be a cool comparison because they're about the same. Actually, the SMWS is a bit more expensive. Uh, I'm just going to clean out my glass really quick and I'm going to I'm going to pour this. And this was a recommendation. Uh, from the Scotch Test Dummy is one of their whiskeys of the year. It's the uh, the Balvenny 14 year Pete Week. Oh, nice. Well, what's the ABV on that one? 47 or 46? Uh, this is uh, 48.3. 48.3. Nice. Yeah. I, I absolutely love this stuff. And every time I go back to it, it just gets better and better and better. So um, I'm going to, as you can see, I've made a good dent on it. So I'm going to pour a little bit more. Nice. I just love the quality of the peat and the finish and everything on this whiskey. It's 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 delicious. There's uh, Scotty going, yes. Yeah, it's really, really good. I gotta try that one. Those aren't those never come up this way, ever. Like pretty much never. Um, what inspired me to go with these Kalilas is we uh, like at the end of December, we did a whiskey in the six get together at a uh, Scottish whiskey bar in Toronto called the Caledonian. And I had a Gordon McPhail cast strength Kalila, but it was ex bourbon cask. And I've been trying to hunt that bottle down and replicate like those flavors uh, again, because like just the most incredible smoked salted lemon butter that's it. that like that's the best way to describe it smoked salted lemon butter um oh my god that sounds ridiculous it, it was so good <laughs> and i couldn't i can't replicate that flavor these kalilas are beautiful the kalila 30 year old that i had beautiful but nothing compares to that night it's like the girl that got away man it's <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see Maybe oh, like, if, if you believe in serendipity, one day we will cross cross paths again. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> one day you're gonna walk into some place and that bottle's gonna be sitting there. You'll 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 get another taste. Hopefully. But this is really nice too, man. The smoke on this one's beautiful. Yeah, the the smoke on this, I was a little bit taken back the first time I smelled it because it reminded me a little bit of that cigarette ashy Lafroig type smoke but then but then in true peated whiskey form which i love one of the the best things i love about a peated scotch one of the things that i've taken i've taken to peated scotch so quickly is how it changes and how it gets so sweet and then that peat smoke becomes a a sweet barbecue smoke almost yeah on, on, the, on the peat week it has just become this this lemon sugary cotton candy smoke overlay dram it's just it's it's just delicious i love it i love that like smokehouse type barbecue sauce like i don't know it's just mm, yeah it's i love it richie z said the girl that got away from me was sicilian <laughs> <laughs> well apparently the girl that got away from me was scottish <laughs> <laughs> i ended up with that sicilian i think <laughs> no she's actually but as Richie's the uh, Sicilian girls can be a little bit, you know, you might have dodged a bullet there. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> <laughs> They're known to be the crazies. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they might. Sicilians carry knives on them. Be careful. 
<laughs> look at you. <laughs> uh, good night, Gregoire. Thanks for coming in, buddy. I know it's late Cheers, for buddy. you. Yeah, it's late for Greg. Oh, I love this Pete week. I, I wish there was another bottle. I, I actually I scoured uh, Ohio looking for one. There was only one place I had one of these, and I went that day and I grabbed it. Well, that's one more than um, will ever come to Ontario. So don't feel so bad. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta, uh, I gotta send you a dram of this, man. If you haven't had it yet. Yeah, I'm a, I, I haven't had any Pete weeks from uh, Balvenie yet. Not one. Well, Richie Z said she was awesome. Okay, Richie, yeah, there's some good ones, man. It's hard she got away, buddy. <laughs> Michael Borello is saying a little calabrese. In the chat, <laughs> Boriello. I think I, yeah, the second time that was the correct way of saying that. Chad Adams, when Italian girls turn 40, they turn 40 all over. <laughs> 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 I'm not sure what that means. I don't think I want to know. <laughs> that was a different time, I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Holy crap, this is good. So, what, so yours, how old is that whiskey? Mm. So this is 13 years old. Yeah. It's first fill sherry, which honestly, like I actually prefer ex bourbon cask when it comes to a peated whiskey, to be honest with you, especially yeah. cast strength peated whiskey. But um, this is really nice. You don't get too much of that sherry influence despite it being first fill sherry. You get, does that, does that have like, does that, does that bottle offer that, that really nice peat? peppery spike on the end like a Lagavulin 8 something like that uh, I would say yeah I mean Lagavulin and Kalila are similar with their smoky styles but I feel like Kalila has a little bit more of um, like, like I don't know it's it's a smoke that I get on the finish more so than on a Lagavulin like I, I can't really explain it actually they are very similar though now that I think about it uh, especially this particular expression. I should pour a little bit of this, but I might be giving uh, away what's going to happen in the in the head to head when I do review them both. <laughs> I want to I see, see you do that blind, see how it comes out. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually very curious myself. Maybe I'll get my wife to pour them out. Yeah, yeah, I love this Pete week. I actually really love the story how Balveni uh, creates this. Like for the entire one week, they shut it down. <laughs> Chad Adams is saying so Rob's saying I'm old no <laughs> I'm just saying that that was like an older uh, belief of what Italian women turned out to be hey Catherine Catherine Bono's pissed man I'm an Italian girl turning 50 what are you saying oh that's right there you go I'm defending you Catherine that's right Catherine <laughs> hey I know I know a lot of you know older Italian women they're beautiful some of them age amazingly yeah, uh, Eric Eric Wade said Sophia Loren, and I totally agree. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> she's like one of the top top. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Nice. I love. Yeah, I love the story of this. How they how they just close the entire distillery down for like a week and just do pure peated whiskey. It's amazing. So really, this one here doesn't need any water. The only reason I'm adding water is to see if I can get a little bit more smoke out of it. What what would you say like the flavor profile on that one is? Like is it like super smoky? Like what what's your takeaway with that one? There's some definite smoke on here, but the smoke was more prevalent when you first open it from the neck pour. That's where you get a much more deeper smoke level as it as it gets down to it uh and it and it kind of works its way down. It's It's this. I'm getting a good apricot note on here. I'm getting a good honey note. A lot. There's a, there's a candy sweetness, a sugary sweetness to it. Um, maybe like a barbecued barbecued apricot, barbecued peach with that smoke overlay on it. It's and then the the finish on it that was my favorite of this dram. This one provides that really beautiful peppery black pepper lingering that it does on the back of the palate. It's really really good. Nice. That sounds awesome. I got to try some of that. Um, hey, Antonio. Thank you, Antonio, thank you so much for the super chat, buddy. He says, I got to go. Uh, know the show is almost over. Great stuff as always. Cheers, everyone. Cheers, buddy. Thank you very much. 
Thanks, Antonio. Um, okay, so we have a few more minutes until the Scotch Four Dummies go live. Why don't you tell these guys where they can find you? I know most of these guys you know, uh, but if anybody tunes in that doesn't know you, they, they, they can find you where? Yeah, so look for me at, uh, on YouTube, The Mash and Drum. Uh, I focus mainly on bourbon, but I have been getting into more scotches lately. Uh, definitely tune in to my March Madness Bourbon Showdown. I got 16 bourbons, 20 to 30 bucks. Um, getting into my fourth bracket. I'm going to be filming that tomorrow for Saturday. That's going to premiere. Um, and then, uh, yeah, find me on Instagram, uh, The Mash and Drum. And you can also find me on Twitter at The Mash and D. So really appreciate the support, guys. And uh, thank you so much, uh, Rob, for having me on your your channel. I've been watching you, you know, since I started watching uh, Whiskey Reviews on YouTube. So it was really fun to have you on. Actually, um, actually a quick story before you go. I when you started, like you were, I knew you because we would talk quite a bit. You were watching my channel. You were commenting regularly. You would email once in a while. Um, yep. And you said you wanted to start and you didn't know if you should or you shouldn't. And you, you, you were kind of debating. And I said, just go for it. And when you did, I was absolutely blown away at how good you were right off the hop because we all kind of suffer these growing pains. Uh, me especially, like it took me about a year to actually realize what the hell I was doing when it came to you. <laughs> um, but <laughs> you just killed it from like day one and you did such a good job, man. You're killing it. Keep doing what you're doing. You, These guys are a testament. They all know who you are. You're doing an incredible job, buddy. So thank you for coming. Uh, I, I appreciate that, man. Thanks. 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 Thanks so much. But you know, I, I definitely learned a lot from, uh, from you, Scotch Chess Dummies, a lot of the different channels we watch. So um, you know, I, it took me a little while to develop my palette, but once I got there, I figured I could do something a little bit different. So thank you. Oh, I got a couple super chats coming in, man. Yeah. Thank you so much, Kev. Uh, he says, thanks for the advice. Great show guys. I really appreciate it, buddy. Thank you. And then Vegas art says, good job guys. Thank you very much, buddy. I really appreciate both of you guys. Um, guys, if you haven't already, please make sure you go to the mash and drum, hit the subscribe button. This guy's pumping out some incredible content. He's well knowledge, uh, very knowledgeable. Um, well knowledge is not the right way to say that. <laughs> uh, very, very knowledgeable. These these whiskeys are starting to kick in a little bit. Um, just honestly doing a great job. So check them out if you haven't already. Guys, thank you very much for tuning in tonight. Uh, Jason, thank you so much for coming on the show tonight, buddy. Yeah, it's a lot of fun, man. We should do this more often. This is a blast. Absolutely. Cheers, everybody. Head over to the Scotch for Dummies in about five minutes. They will continue the entertainment. Cheers. <laughs>